Who just came in? Uh, Rashern Baker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had a room full of blind people, so we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all got jokes. <laughs> We've already friends would beat up a couple of your employees. <laughs> and don't forget the hearing impaired. Hey. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> oh, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Okay, who the heck are you guys? Who's here? Come in with me. Which side did you want to start around with? Okay, since I don't know my left from my right, let me see. Uh, right. Hi. Hi. Hello, how are you? Fine. My and name is Ava Furby. Miss Furby, nice to have you here. She's our secretary. And our next person? My name is Rosalind Mangle, and I'm a Braille teacher. Oh, great. Hello. 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 Valencia Moody. Uh, second vice president. Oh, well, let's see. Well, we're not there. <laughs> 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 nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice, nice to meet you. Good morning, Mr. Baker. I think we know each other. Elena Villan Butler, Prince George's County Government, oh, Department right. of Family Services. Great. And we'll oh. go on this side. Oh, hey, hi. Amber Woods, the first vice president of the National Harbor Jam. Oh, nice to meet you, first vice president. And that's Harvard, that's a nice place, too. Yes. And you are with the cool glasses? <laughs> I'm Michelle Clark, I'm the president of the National Harbor. Oh, Channel. El okay. President Day, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what uh, Kayine says when he sees me in the morning. Uh, Hi, I'm Michelle Hughes, and I'm the chairperson for the membership committee. Oh, oh thank to see you. you. Thank you. I, know, I love your outfit. Mm -hmm. Who's stealing this leader? My wife looked at it. Yes, ma'am. My name is Portia Chandler. I live in Bowie, and I'm uh, chairperson. chairperson of the Axis. Oh, so this is like the important people. The <laughs> <manager>. <laughs> the <board>. This is <laughs> the board. You guys are like the board it. The board. The board. They never let me meet with important people. You need to get over there. Go ahead. Missing to the interesting thing, there are some men in the organization. I was going to say, well, <laughs> don't do with the dudes. <laughs> we have one director of um, one uh, one board member who is public relations, and he is getting his bachelor's degree, so he's in class. And then our treasurer has another commitment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I am so glad to have the ladies just all to myself. Thank oh. you very much. <laughs> and thank you for coming up here visiting us in Upper Marlboro. You're quite welcome. Oh, great. Let's see if you're okay. Not a problem. Thank you for having us. Yes. yes. Thank you. So the floor is yours. Okay. Well, let's start. Who has the envelope? I do. Ah, okay. oh, there you go. You have an envelope of information about the National Harbor Chapter and about the National Federation of the Blind. Are you familiar with the National Federation of the Blind? I, I am. In, I am indeed. I used to... Uh, in the legislature, so a lot of the legislation on the state level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I always, you know, and it's one of the things I miss. I don't, you know, no one comes and visits me up here. I feel lonely. In Annapolis, uh, you would come visit me all the time. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> so, I enjoyed it. So, yes. Okay. So, all the envelopes. I have the envelopes. Yes. He has them all? Yes, I gave them all. Okay. And we are accustomed to coming to this meeting in the old format, where you would be the council meeting or something. There would be a whole bunch of people, and we'd pass out a bunch of envelopes. Oh. Okay, so, but that's okay. This format is just fine. Just fine. <laughs> well, don't worry. You know, Lane can make sure we get around to, uh, to our staff. Okay. Um, and what I did is I wrote up a sheet about the history of the National Harbor Chapter, and um, just to give you an idea about, I, I have a board member's names there as well, okay. and I gave you an idea of all the things we do, past activities, and then I gave you some future activities that we uh, have planned to do. And so the National Harbor Chapter, that's fairly new, right? Well, January. we're seven years old. We okay. came out of the dust. Of a former chapter that kind of dissolved, and um, when, when 
at some point, it just occurred to me, we don't have a chapter here in Prince George's County. Oh, wow. And I talked to a few folk, mm -hmm. and they were in agreement, and we formed the chapter. And seven, come, come January, in seven years, we'll be, be celebrating our seventh anniversary. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, we have to make sure we get a proclamation, because that's a big that's a big deal. Oh, Amber, now you see another proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure that we, you know, we're glad to have a, you know, a chapter here. One of the things that, um, you know, we're trying to do is make sure, because we're in the Washington region, everything is a national <coughs> capital region for, for chapters. Yes, yes. But Prince George's County, given our population, um, almost a million people, which is you know, double the population of the, of the District of Columbia, mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that, um, you know, we're so large, 500 square miles. Mm -hmm. So having our own chapter is, is very important to us. Oh, yeah. Thank so you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, but the thing is, is finding the people. Because I know that there are plenty of blind people out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And finding them. Yes, in fact, um, I don't know if he's still there. Mr. Jones, who used to work in our school, um, you know, had... Gladstone and Spelman, there's Dr. Jones who was who was there at the uh, um, Gladstone and Spelman where my children went to elementary school. Okay, this was, okay. Mm -hmm. This was before I actually went and got into office. Mm -hmm. And um, so what it allowed me to do is we would talk sometimes when he goes, my daughter was, he was a counselor, so my daughter spent a lot of time in his office. Uh, we won't go into why. <laughs> but during those times when we were not talking about her, um, one thing that he made very clear to me, because he started coming when I ran, he wanted to come to events I had. And um, the issue always was transportation. Okay. Yeah. 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 Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and so it just became, it became a real concern that he could, you know, um, you know, and as I ran for county executive, I started having events elsewhere, and it became an issue of how to get there, how to get back, right. whether in mm -hmm. fact the, um, and this has become something that I've become very aware of. Um, my wife doesn't walk anymore, so, so a wheelchair is, so I'm always mindful of the fact that whenever we travel, you know, I've got to make sure it's handicapped accessible. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And not just getting in, but also the rooms that we request. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you come to find out when you have to deal with these various issues, how far we have to go. Right. You, know, you, you would just think these things are in there. So, so that was always, and even transportation for us, it, it's limited how we can get her in and out of a vehicle. So public transportation mm -hmm. um, is always challenging. So mm -hmm. he would always bring that up, and I remember that when I got to the legislature, and it's one of the issues. I know we constantly talk about, um, <coughs> not only for the bus that's here in Prince George's County, but also for, uh, for Metro when we're dealing with um, the system. I think one of the things is that we tend to talk about the Metro Rail, and not the bus system and its access when many more people, especially um, with special needs, uh, use use the bus and, and need that available. But the interesting thing about that um, is availability of buses or tr and transportation period here in the county in off hours. Yeah. And there are plenty of people who live in areas where the bus is not run period. Right. But even if like, um, in our case, most of us ride Metro Access and um, under the new rules of Metro Access, although the ADA says um, that you should have paratransit within three quarters of a mile from the bus stop, but if you live in an area where the bus runs only at rush hour, so on the weekend, you don't have transportation. So on the weekend, you're on, there's... If the, like, say, say for instance, that in the, club, in the bus blue, uh, the yes, it's, yes. It's, it's, so if the blue bus doesn't run. That's very good because I don't even know what color it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I haven't been blind all my life, so that's part of it. Yeah. But if the blue bus doesn't run, and you're and you're a metro access person, mm -hmm. and you're not what's called grandfathered in, who came after 2010, then you don't have service. Really? And it comes across as if the only time you're supposed to ride is during rush hour, Monday through Friday. Yeah. 
If I could add, there was a bus study that was done in Austin Hill for the W13, and I still have the report, Not unfortunately I don't have it with me, but it's still online, and it stated that we did, according to this bus study, we did need um, later evening services, and we also needed weekend services, and my understanding is that wherever the metro bus and rail goes, the metro access have to go too, and the sad part is, I'm trapped at my home. I can't go anywhere on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And I like to be involved in my community. I love Prince George's. I lived here all my life. So I'm a long time resident. Uh, we like that. <laughs> so um, that said, I can see Metro Access go down the street for a couple of houses down because my neighbor, he always had disability, so he was able to be grandfathered in. But see, that's what I'm saying. It's um, with, with the uh, logistics, that's a wasted trip right there, too. You know, you can just see that person get on, and I think some other people can get on too. They're, you know, right. could get on the ride. So that's one thing I want to bring up as consideration, if possible. Okay. No, I mean, it's, this is pretty timely since we'll be meeting with uh, later today our representative on um, Wimata's board. Ah. So um, this afternoon I'll bring this up to him. You know, and it's also <coughs> timely because um, there's a big discussion about how do you. How do we, as a region, fund uh, our metro system? Yeah. You know, in yeah. addition yes. to the um, the upgrades that need to be done for maintenance, is also the expansion of the rail itself, but also expansion of metro access and the bus system. And then what does that what does that mean, and who shares that cost? Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of it comes down to um, the cost of providing the services throughout the region. And unfortunately, there is not a dedicated stream of funding um, for the metro system itself. And so you depend on the state, mm -hmm. you know, Maryland, uh, Virginia, and the district uh, and the federal government. Unfortunately, you know, for us in Maryland is, you know, it's the state of Maryland. So it's not the county. We put a portion in, but it's really the state. Mm -hmm. And getting people who don't live in the Washington region to understand um, how important it is for the transit uh, system and access and the money to go into it is 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 a difficult one. And so we're we're trying to make that argument with not only the county government itself, because I think Montgomery County and Prince George's County, we get it. We get why we need to have uh, the resources to make this available, so not so you don't have to do the, the grandfather uh, grandfathering in that we can make it available to all of our our residents who need it so the quality of life is what it should be um, so our job and, and you guys do a great job is persuading the rest of the state <laughs> you know those who live in Anne Arundel County and Howard County and the governor uh, why this is so important and the same goes for Northern Virginia you know um, they have to do the same so uh, but I will bring this up to him on on, on this issue uh, Metro Access and uh, the bus, bus service is on off hours uh, so that we can see what we can do. Well, then let me do a segue on that one. Oh. one of the, I have like five things I wanted to ask you about. Let me show the issues. But one of them was a question in regards to the board members that I think you, you designate two people for the county? For the uh, board. Metro, for the Metro Board? Yes. Uh, actually, one. So mm -hmm. one is a representative. How it works is um, Prince George's County and Montgomery County designate one person each. Mm -hmm. The governor's office designates two. Okay. A Prince George's representative and a Montgomery County rep representative. So that's where the two comes from. That's where the two comes okay. from. Okay, okay. Because one thing, I used to be on the advisory <laughs> committee, a committee that I don't really think that they have much power. But um, I used to ask them all the time, how come you don't have any disabled people on the board? So I was wondering about the qualifications or whatever, the criteria for asking, you know, for getting those people because my thing, one of the things about the National Federation of the Blind, if it's about us, include us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, on the entire board, there's no one that's disabled. You're not walking in the same shoes you're walking in. That is an excellent point. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really good um, And there's no reason for that to happen uh, other than, you know, people have not considered it, but it's something 
that we will look at in the reappointments. Re because it should be. It should be someone on. So there's an advisory board, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much ineffective? In my opinion, it is. Okay. I'll bring that up also. Because that would be a helpful uh, part of it is um, making sure, you know, one of the criteria that we have in making the appointment is someone who is actually going to use the system. You know, it's hard to, you know, you know, we ran into this in the past mm -hmm. is where a board appoint, appointee never got on a bus or, you know, the, the, the metro system wow. itself. So, so you're making decisions, but it's not really, you know, you're not affected right. by it. So, so then that, you know, like that, I guess the piece that this song, this resistance would, to, would to be to get someone who ride the metro access. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I'm telling you, you really would have an experience. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. metro access. Oh. Oh. And, or even, I mean, if you had an appointee and had them have a uh, some type of uh, collaboration with some uh, with a little mini advisory board or something because I just feel that the people who are on that board don't connect with the disability committee uh, uh, community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't feel that. How often do you meet with um, board members? They meet once a month. Yeah. I don't know yeah. which Thursday it is, but it's a Thursday. But how often do does the federation actually sit down with the board board members um, no. about the issues? Oh, well, there have been some people who have gone. I work full time, so I'm like today I had to take off to come here. What? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm federal government. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm indeed for, honored now. <laughs> Bronze works for the federal government. She had said off too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for yeah. using it. So, yeah, so you, I want to make sure I get all your questions in bed. You <laughs> took off. You're going to be asking me for back pay. <laughs> well, that's all right. So, they, so, they so far, that. I'm going to talk about the uh, the off hours mm -hmm. and, um, and the grandfather <laughs> today. Uh, with our board member, but I'm also going to talk about um, membership on the board mm -hmm. and how do we make sure that that information is communicated um, uh, uh, to us. Because one of the things is that, um, and I tried to do this in the very beginning of administration, I've tried to, I did it once, but I tried to do it again. And that is, you know, it's been a while since I've actually taken a bus. You know, I had to when, you know, when we had one car and two back of us working and a baby. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But back in the day. But I've never tried to take a bus before I became county executive from, I live in Chevrolet. Oh, so you do fine. Oh, yeah, right okay. next to it. So take a bus from Chevrolet to Upper Marlboro. Wow. And um, <clears throat> it's just the, the notion of how many times you have to change in order to get yes. here yes. in different ways. Mm -hmm. So if you had a court appointment. I bring that up because it's just it's exactly what you said, and that is, if you've never done it, or if you don't do it, then you don't know really what um, is missing and why it becomes important to have have options and consistency. Because it's very hard if the bus, you know, doesn't come, or you miss a connection, um, then you're waiting for hours. Um, you know, so I have that doubt. So. You, your next question. Okay, well, let me finish. I made that question, asked that question once before, mm -hmm. and they said that we had sympathizers on the board. I don't need your sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> I just need you to deal with what I'm going through. I don't need your sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> let me say this about this device. I'm I sure they never said that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I, I left the headphones for this thing at home. So, Mental Links for SSN transportation to the county. I okay. have a question. Yeah. Okay, well, let me go through here. Is it related to this subject? Uh, it's related to the chapter. Okay, well, go ahead. Uh, question. Yes, ma'am. How can uh, we, at the National uh, Harbor Chapter of uh, PZ County, can find ways to get uh, funding or grants? to help us to facilitate some of the things that the chapter find themselves uh, to be able to assist uh, other blind members. How, is there any way that we can, uh, is there an avenue that we can go to? Um, uh, 
Can we get some funding? Because that's part of my presentation, and I have another little piece to go along with it, okay? Oh, okay, um, I'm gonna. Okay. Uh, may we remember? Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about it. Well, that I'm not young about. like you guys. So, you know, uh, it, it, it takes, you know, I need help. <laughs> you know what? Did, are you? Did you handle the like the one-stop um, employment centers? They. Uh, we do have one. Yes. Okay. Do you, do you have authority over them? It, it's, uh, yes, what's your question? Okay. Mm -hmm. We found that in the one-stop employment centers that they don't have the technology that if a blind person comes in there and they have those computers, because I could see when I first left Verizon, mm -hmm. and um, they had computers everywhere. You could sit down and look for jobs. But there aren't jobs. Well, there's, there's not assistive technology on the computers. The two main um, technologies are what they call the Cadillac and mm -hmm. the Rolls Royce is um, JAWS, Job Access with Speech, and Magic. There's some other ones. But I think that you at least need to have a copy on one of the computers. And that's, te that's technology that can be um, invoked and cut off back and forth. So it's not like a person can't use the system. But you need to have some something in there. If I if I go in there as a blind person, I can't use the system. Let me look into that because the way that it works, and the reason I was hesitant about saying mm -hmm. yes or no is that the way that the workforce development in the one stop center is mm -hmm. is the county has um, it's run by the state. Okay. The state actually runs it, but they place them in county agencies. Okay. Um, or city agency if you're in Baltimore. So we have one under our, um, when they change the structure, under our um, economic development, economic uh, development corporation. Uh, so what I'll do is, let me look into that okay. and figure out what we have there and, and see, because it's a combination of the resources we get from the state. So they actually dictate how the function of the office is done. But I can look into that and see if, because um, that's that's another one we can bring up if it's not to our satisfaction. Um, we lobby down in Annapolis. Oh yeah, because I mean disabled people, well, in my case, in our case, blind people want to work. So if it, we it, want it, you to work. Uh, yeah, I tell you. So if, you have, <laughs> yeah. if, you have, if there's an employment office, that doesn't give us equal opportunity to, mm -hmm. to be yeah. in the employment office. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I don't have much more. Oh. I got an email from an organization asking me about the county health plan. Yes. And um, and what it talked about is that they had reached out to Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind for assistance. And immediately my mind went to, if it's for us, ask us. Columbia Lighthouse, the difference between our organization uh, and other blindness organizations is that we're National Federation of the Blind and the of is different than for the blind, is that in this organization, secretary and above, you have to be blind or low vision to be an officer in the organization. So it's us helping us. So to go to an organization where there are people who have sight, who are helping the blind, does not address, ask me about what my situation is. I'm qualified to be asked, and there are many other people who are qualified as well. So this was from, did you know if it's from our health department? Yeah, I, our they, they, I was sent a copy of it. And I made a call to them and left a voice message and never got an answer back. Oh, that's not acceptable. Like that. um, so we can make sure, uh, if uh, Christopher Wallace over here, he'll, we can make sure, if you can make sure we get that, I can um, reach out to, um, to Pam. Who would, do you know Atlanta, who would handle that whole thing? Who would have? Mm -hmm. I think that it would fall. Yeah, um, it would probably fall under the Adult and Wellness Division. Deborah McGruder, okay. uh, which is uh, reports to Dr. Ernest Carter. But I can assist if Chris needs any assistance. Okay. That's, that's where I come from, ladies. So that's my own stuff. When you say help, when you say help to Paul, I was like, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I brought her. <laughs> 
that's my business card and it has our chapter email on there. So if anybody needs, I've given a bunch of business cards out, but if anybody needs to reach us, they get my numbers there and the telephone and the email. Okay, and so this, so Christopher Strays, the health department sent out a information, but it had Columbia Lighthouse football. They said they reached out, I just went through it and the person said, why did they reach out to you all? So I said, well, let me read it. It says, well, we reached out to Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind for, um, I guess, as a resource for on blindness. Ask the blind people about resource for blindness. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I appreciate that. Uh, well, we will make sure and, uh, that uh, that we get this to the appropriate people over in the health department and, and with the question of, why do you ask the blind people what they <laughs> And it's good to point out that our parent organization, which is National Federation of the Blind, has been around for 75 years. Yes. And we'll 76 yeah. now. 76 yeah. and yeah. 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 coming up on November 16th, uh, officially. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not like we haven't been around for a good amount of time for them to get introduced to us or <laughs> do a way of so. <laughs> so we will make sure. Okay, now this is back to the partnership and grant. We want to look at doing some partnerships in the community. Mm -hmm. If you look at that list of um, things that we have scheduled, we've done a tremendous amount of things in seven years, mm -hmm. and but we are still doing things. And somehow I met Gerald Bond, not Gerald Bonds, Daryl Bonds, mm -hmm. and oh, I know what it was. Where men, Amy, and Heidi used to meet, they used to meet okay. at the Vista Garden Shopping Center, and so did we. Oh. And um, we had to move because the bus didn't run on Saturdays. So we had to move to, we threw down the suit in that Imani Temple. But so, Daryl is my little Facebook friend. So when I want something, I just email up some stuff. So, <laughs> so he had sent out a thing about Thanksgiving, um, turkey, so I just putting the packages and stuff together. Right. So I wrote him and said, Daryl, is this an opportunity for us? So we're gonna, we're gonna partner with them for different things. And, mm -hmm. and then also we've, we've been giving out stuff to, give, Hygiene kits. Since we started, we've given hygiene kits to homeless people. Mm -hmm. And last year, we were able to partner with Department of Social Services, and we've given out over 1,200 kits in the past seven years. And we, we're, we're gearing up for that again in November to get that started. So we're looking at some suggestions to partner with people, and of course to look at some grants for to help us afford some of the things we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's probably, I mean, um, and Lenny, you can help me if, if you can. Um, you know, I know that what we do in the county is we have our, um, what is it called, our community partnership grants. Partnership grants. Have you ever applied for any of those? Um, yes. Um, well, let, no, let me say this. No. And that's because the website is inaccessible. Oh, that's not good. Really? Yes. In, in, well, you know what, I'll find out. Um, well, let me do this then. Um, we will correct that. But, so from the county office, we have community partnership grants, which you can apply for. Okay. Uh, and were you typing? Oh, no. Okay. Did you call oh, that? I thought you were going to ask me to type for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. That's like the trick question. <laughs> Hers is quieter than mine, that's why. Oh, yours is fine. You said community partnership grants. Right. And we can make sure, Christopher, that we get the information to you on the partnership grant. Okay. okay. And when they're due. Uh, they're not large. That's okay. Um, but they they are available. And the others is, so the agencies, and let me help me if I'm wrong on this, um, the, each agency's um, uh, so whether it's social service, health department, or family services, we'll look at grants that we can get either at the state level, federal level, or private. And so that might be a resource to talk to um, family services about what may be available. So Elena can, okay. our director can, can help with that. Okay. Okay. There's actually a number of opportunities with and I'm glad that we exchanged business cards mm -hmm. uh, at the top of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so as Mr. Baker was talking, I believe that there are a number of opportunities to partner with the Department of Family Services, okay. not just within our Aging and Disabilities uh, Division, where the Disability Coordinator mm -hmm. uh, sits, 
but also we just recently hired a veterans coordinator okay. and that person is going to be looking at uh, standing up our new veterans office okay. and I think there's great opportunity to partner with you all as well to get your um, your organization out uh, to that population. Okay. In addition to that, I um, worked with a grant writer, a very successful grant writer when I was at the health department who I've also asked to do some work in the Department of Family Services. Mm -hmm. With regards to your question, Mr. Baker, about grant assistance, I think we have some opportunity there as well. Okay. There you go. Wow. Now we have, I have a lot of the information, but when I went online, and that's the job I do in the federal mm -hmm. government, I do website testing. I work with the Office of Government Wide Policy, and I'm an IT specialist. And um, they always, you know, I'm in the middle of doing work, and I get an email, dang, can you look at this? Can you check it for accessibility? <laughs> <laughs> so I just do it and send it back and going back to do my work. But that's the thing I do, and I feel that if, if, if it doesn't work for me, how can I try to use it? Or how can I get access to it rather than having to pay someone? Under, we also have governance over all the nationwide.gov websites. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> so if something has gone wrong, I have the authority to come back and tell you about it. <laughs> I'm going to be extra nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it's just to make it usable. I mean, my tax, I pay taxes. Of, oh my God, I'm going to pay those house taxes. Like, um, but, but I mean, I'm paying for it, so make it accessible to us. We're all paying for it. Just make it so that we can use it. That's, that's very true. And let me just say this. I mean, one of the things that we're striving to do in this government is to make sure that there is accessibility. And when something is not working, uh, we certainly want to know. That's my last thing. <laughs> when, you were at, when you came to the, the meeting with the ATU, Amalgamated Transit Union. Yes, yes. We were chanting when you came in. I want to, I want to say this to you. Metro access is excessively hard on us. And had you been a Metro Access rider and you were late, they would have left you. Mm -hmm. They gave us five minutes and then gone. Mm -hmm. and, and most of us had come on Metro Access and we had given them times when that meeting was over. Whether you got there or not, when it came time, dispatch would have been called and those drivers said, get those people out of there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there were some other people that were chanting as well for other reasons. But that's why I began chanting. I was like, where is the county executive? Because, and I understand, I definitely understand your situation. Well, you know what though, but it brings up it brings up a very important question: is just like you know, you know, I didn't I didn't realize Metro Access would leave you because, because right. But 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 think about it. I mean, if nothing else, what I do understand is the inability to sometimes because you have disability. It ain't like you can, you know, as I said that, hey, it's not like I can just tell my wife, okay, well, you know what? I got to leave in five minutes, so I really need you to cooperate with me and, yeah. and get in here and then get the wheelchair, get set. Mm -hmm. It is, you're going to be running behind. And so mm -hmm. what we're trying to do in the county is understand every part of our population. Just like you want to make sure your quality of life is great and you participate, as you say, you pay taxes, you want to participate in everything that we have the offer as uh, long as we have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. I want the same thing for my wife. Absolutely. I want her to participate in everything that we can get there, which right. means that there are there are obstacles that I have to overcome. Right. But the but the county government and the state government and the federal government should should help me. And one of the things is 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 metro access. It should be part of making the quality of life better. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to find a way, not just Metro Access, our buildings, our computer system, everything. Oh, yeah. So I'm sympathetic to that. I was sympathetic to the people of Chani. It just, now I'll say this, just my... This hit you at the wrong time. It hit me at the wrong time. It was a bad morning. <laughs> you know, she wasn't having it. I ain't taking no medicine. I ain't going there. And I got there, they were chatting. I was like, you know what? And it was, I tried to do something which, which we should all be able to do. What I tried to do was make a last minute decision to come. Right, right. Cause you that was it. So normally, just like you have to schedule your time when you're going to be here and you leave, normally what I do is if it's a weekend with my wife and I have to make a provision, is I plan it out mm -hmm. the week ahead. Mm -hmm. 
I decided I wanted to get there and it was a last minute decision, which meant that everything went went wrong. Well it didn't go wrong. It went it went it went life. Okay. <laughs> but what we should have to do in government is to be sympathetic to those things and incorporate that issue. We shouldn't add stress to your ability to do your daily, you know, daily life stuff. I don't want stress on mine. I want to be able to, you know, I don't want to come there and there ain't no ramp. Yeah. 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 Or come to an yeah. elevator that doesn't talk. Your elevator's not oh, yeah. talking. Right. 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 Or come to a building where there ain't no elevator. Or, or how about it doesn't have, even have the grill? Because when the yeah. elevator, I don't care yeah. if the elevator's talking or not. I put my hand out there and touch for grill to see if I'm really on the right floor. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. the grill not there. Like, come on, y'all. And there's something as simple as the bathroom. Right. I've been in some places where you can't distinguish if it's male or female. Because yeah. uh, there's nothing there to say women and men. Right. And not even just the grill. They have low vision. And then they don't even have a picture of women or, or anything that would distinguish right. that. I mean, these, so, these are the like things I, I'd say, you know, and I'll, I'll end with this. You know, one of the things I became, I never thought I'd be, you know, Bathrooms would be something that's so important to me. Yeah. Bathrooms would be so important to me. Get old that, enough. No. <laughs> 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 you know, when you're a trip. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, can I pay for the county resource day? It's coming up November 5th. And it's, it's a really, we want it, if it's possible, because I heard that the health department. Yes, um, Elaine is here, yeah. and um, just if they could give a shout out because we're going to have it where it's screening too, eye screening. Because what I learned mm -hmm. is that there's people who waited and waited and waited for their eyesight to just be gone before they got help. So this is a way that I want the community to know that they can come and get the screening too. That's one of the things that we have, but we have various health things as well because health. Mm -hmm. um, one of one of the things that we've noticed is that diabetes is a big issue in the black community that has yes. cost a lot of us to lose our vision. In fact. I'm one of those people. Mm. So, so you'll be doing health screening. Yeah. Well, then can we make sure, Cam? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I stood off to some lady who. who oh no, she sent it to seniors, to senior programs. But I will send you the flyer. Um, on the information. Okay. Okay. And we're going to try and take a picture, right, Miguel? Mr. Baker, I have a proclamation here for you to present for the picture. Oh, okay. I have something here. Mm -hmm. Do you have to leave? Do I have to? Unfortunately, yes. They um, they have somebody waiting for me here. But I'm not going to do You're being. Okay. <laughs> well, you're not, but I think um, we're going to have time for the proclamation. Okay. Right. And for and for the photo. Okay. And for the photo. Um, Mike. I think maybe in here might be best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do it in here. Yes, sir. And. Um, Hey, what, ladies? Why well, don't we get my head down the table towards Mr. Baker? We're gonna pay for those drinks somehow. Right here. Come on, trouble. I hey, you you uh, okay. Oh, excuse me, Amber. you okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to step on the foot. That's all. Okay. And it's from the National Federation of the Blind, and it has on it a logo, and it has um, voice what's the the nation? Nation? What's the the Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, this is great. I'm gonna have to make sure my daughter doesn't steal it. We got some you can buy. <laughs> You are something. <laughs> you, yes, you are. All right. The way this very proclamation. Can I have the lady here on the far right? I don't know her name. I apologize. Hi, um, Michelle. Maybe I can help you. Yep. Okay, yeah. Yep. Nice to thank you, Elena. I appreciate it's okay, that. Okay, young ladies. Okay, young ladies. Oh, yeah. You can bring that to me. Make sure that I'll get it facing the camera. Yes, ma'am. I will make sure. I'll make sure everyone is facing the camera. Yes. Yes. And if I can get you back on that other side of the screen, perfect, lady. If you all look wonderful, you're great. Okay. Make sure we're looking at the camera. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You keep on talking. Ladies, we are looking right this way. We're facing the camera. The sound of my voice. Can everyone hear me nice and clear? Great. And we're going on three. One, two, and three. Thank you. We're going to hold for a couple more, please. One, two, and 
three. You all are looking great. You've done this before. <laughs> One, two, and three. And Mr. Baker, if you could tilt that just a little bit towards me, sir. Okay. Thank you. And on three again, ladies. And Mr. Baker, one, two, and three. That's the stuff, ladies. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.